Welcome to this little video on the topic of bacterial genetics. Certainly bacterial genetics is one of the more interesting and exciting topics in microbiology, in my humble opinion. Uh, the last 20, 30 years has led, have led to a huge um, increase in our knowledge about our own genetics uh, through the use of microbes, uh, studying the processes of uh, gene transfer and spread of antibiotic resistance and gene cloning and all that really is come about as a result of work with microbes. First thing you need to do, however, is watch one of the animations that's posted on the class portal. Uh, if you go to the class portal and navigate to the resources in the animations folder, there is uh, an animation on horizontal gene transfer. So what you need to do is pause this video right now and go watch that first part of the animation and then come back here. Now that you've watched the first part of the horizontal gene transfer animation, uh, what we need to do is, is put it in context here, just to remind ourselves where we are. If we start on the right side of this diagram you see here, talking about the genetics uh, within a cell, we've spent quite a bit of time this term already talking about um, the genetics uh, within the central dogma and the genetics within a cell. You remember we start with uh, the DNA, which we know through the process of transcription is converted into messenger RNA and then can be translated into a functional protein. That Those two steps result in what we know as uh, the expression of a gene. We saw that in the PGLO experiment with the expression of GFP as well as the expression of the beta-lactamase gene. Uh, so that's sort of the genetics within a cell. We talk about genetics of when cells replicate. We've done this before, talked about this before as well when we talked about uh, cell growth. The idea when a uh, cell has its chromosome that it makes a copy of, right, right there, and that gets passed on to the two daughter cells through the um, process of binary fission. That passing of genetic material is referred to as uh, vertical gene transfer, as you saw, from one generation to the next. What we're going to be interested in in this little piece is not those first two, although those are important. We're going to be talking about uh, horizontal gene transfer, transfer, which involves a process called recombination, which we'll review in a, in a moment. There are three mechanisms, as you remember, saw in the first uh, part of that animation for horizontal gene transfer. Uh, one which we've done, namely transformation, that was the PGLO experiment that we, we did. We did an artificial transformation. Uh, there's also a, a process called conjugation, which is an experiment we'll be doing this week in the lab with two different strains of E. coli. And the third mechanism for horizontal gene transfer is through using viruses, which is known as transduction. Unfortunately, because of the weather and our schedule, we won't be able to do the experiment on uh, transduction this year, but um, it is another mechanism for the horizontal gene transfer within microbes. A um, little quick review. What is recombination? You may remember from your early biology experiment experience, uh, during the process of meiosis, there's this uh, process called crossing over, which happens when pieces of the chromosome uh, during meiosis get exchanged. You may remember uh, the, the process of crossing over during meiosis, where there's, um, in this case, uh, one chromosome having all the lowercase alleles for, the, for uh, five different genes, the other chromosome having the uppercase uh, alleles. And they're in the process of meiosis. Sometimes these pieces of the chromosome can get exchanged, resulting in uh, new combinations or recombinant chromosomes. This is very much um, important in the process of evolution, the shuffling of the genetic deck, so to speak. In bacteria, we don't have meiosis, but uh, you do have a process of recombination. It's a little uh, simpler in some uh, cases, some ways. Your diagram on the bottom here just shows you one example of how a small piece of DNA can be exchanged uh, between two different sources. If you have a, a nick that occurs in, a, in one strand of a, of a piece of DNA and you can have a, a little exchange where the piece, you have a crossing over event that happens here and you actually get an exchange of a small section and not uh, so much of the whole chromosome but uh, like we saw in eukaryotic organisms, but small pieces of DNA. Uh, that is frequently the way that this happens in uh, bacterial cells as we will see moving forward. Uh, first of those mechanisms for horizontal gene trans, uh, transfer is known as transformation. Before you proceed, you need to watch the second part, the second tab of that horizontal gene transfer animation. So I'm going to pause this video right now, go watch that, and then come back and we'll put the pieces together. 
now that you've watched that piece on transformation on the animation on the portal um, first of all let's think of some of the uh, important salient points who discovered it as you uh, probably noticed or remembered from your earlier biology experiments experience that was the transformation was first discovered in 1928 by uh, Frederick Griffith working with the strains of pneumonia that you saw used in the animation that uh, transfer of genetic material the transformation factor this was even before we even knew about DNA uh, what that factor was was later discovered obviously to be nucleic acids uh, what is the actual process? Let's make sure we have the the steps familiar so that we, when we're talking about the process of transformation, we're talking about the same things. This diagram here illustrates the, the fundamental steps involved in a transformation event. There is a piece of, D, of DNA that is the sort of foreign DNA that will be coming in. There's a cell that uh, we're starting with. The first thing that happens is that uh, recipient cell takes in the foreign piece of DNA or the exogenous DNA. Once it's inside the cell, it can't just sort of hang out as a single-stranded piece and be of much use. It needs to actually be integrated into the host chromosome, and that's what's being shown here in this next step where you have that um, crossing over or that recombination event where some pieces, not even all of it necessarily, will be incorporated into the host chromosome and give it some new genes. As you met, uh, saw there we in the animation, uh, this happens with just linear pieces of DNA uh, and very naturally. This is known as natural transformation. We did it slightly differently in the lab when we did the PGLO experiment. You'll remember we used a plasmid or a circular piece of DNA so that we didn't have to have the genes get recombined into the host chromosome because the plasmid is um, able to self-replicate if it has that origin of replication and the genes that are on the plasmid can be expressed without having to be integrated in to the chromosome. Uh, can all bacteria be transformed? No. Not all bacteria uh, are able to take in foreign DNA. Cells that are able to take in foreign DNA are described as being competent. Some cells are more naturally competent than others and will take up uh, foreign DNA from cells around them that are dying and releasing bits of DNA. We can do it artificially in the lab. We used uh, a, a series of buffers to prepare the competent cells when we did the experiment this past week in the lab which made the cells more receptive to taking in the plasmid DNA. There are a number of different ways to make cells more competent or willing to receive foreign DNA. Um, we try to use the ones that are the easiest, quickest, and the cheapest. Um, what factors affect the efficiency of the transformation? Well it should be no, come as no surprise that the larger the piece of DNA you're trying to, that is, we're trying to excuse me, get into a cell, the more difficult it is to, to transform. Indeed, larger plasm plasmids are much harder to get into cells than smaller plasmids. Uh, sometimes the form or the shape of the plasmid, whether it's supercoiled or, or sort of a floppy circle, can make it also more or less efficient uh, during that process. There are a number of factors, the cell type, um, and the temperature, obviously, and the size of the plasmid that can all affect the efficiency. Uh, it doesn't have to be super efficient, however, because once you get it into one cell and that cell can replicate, it can pass on the new genes pretty efficiently and spread antibiotic resistance uh, or any number of other genes depending on what you've recombined into the new host cell. The next process is known as bacterial conjugation. It's very different than transformation in that instead of just having one recipient cell, you actually have two cells involved in this. This is an electron micrograph colorized to show you an actual uh, conjugation event occurring where there is one cell which will be known as the F plus cell, which will be the donor, which will pass DNA through a sex pillus or a conjugation tube to a recipient cell. At this point, what you want to do is uh, pause the video and watch the animation on bacterial conjugation, which can also be found on the portal in the resources tab in the animations folder. And watch parts one and two, and then come on back to, the, to this video, and we'll put all the pieces together. All right, now that you have watched, hopefully, the parts one and two of bacterial conjugation, and have a fairly decent understanding of what's going on, we'll make sure we have all the the salient points uh, highlighted. On this next slide here we can show if we sort of look at the basics of conjugation. First thing is we're going to have obviously the uh, bacterial chromosome is shown here with the, the purple circle uh, with the cell on the left. It also has a plasmid that has uh, what's known as the F factor. The F factor 
stands for uh, the fertility factor, and actually it's a series of genes that code for both the production of the conjugation tube, which will connect the two cells, uh, as well as genes responsible for this un replication and unrolling of the plasmid and then transferring it across to the recipient cell. Sometimes you will hear them referred to as the TRA genes or the transfer genes. Uh, and those will go through the conjugation tube. Uh, as a result of that, there are two cell types, and you'll see the abbreviations. We use F plus if the cell has the fertility factor incorporated into the plasmid, and the recipient cell, which will be described as being F minus because it does not have the fertility factor. During the process of conjugation, that plasmid is replicated, and then it is transferred through this conjugation tube into the recipient cell. Um, through that sex pillus that you see uh, shown on the diagram here. As a result, uh, you have two cells, one which is going to be the donor and one which is going to be the recipient. It is a directional transfer of the DNA. It's not in both directions, in one direction. And then as a result, uh, if the entire plasmid is indeed transferred, then in, at the end, not only does the recipient cell receive some new genes, it will also now be an F plus cell because it has the the fertility factor incorporated in as part of that plasmid. Uh, this is a, a very common process that occurs in uh, bacteria for spreading antibiotic resistance in a medical setting. This is one of the big worries that uh, antibiotic resistance, which is commonly found on plasmids, can very easily be transferred between various um, microbes within a culture, even between different species. Uh, in some cases, you can have conjugation occur between different species and spread antibiotic resistance very, very rapidly and effectively, which is obviously a problem in a medical setting. What you need to do now for the last little piece is watch parts three and four of the bacterial conjugation animation, and then come on back and we'll look at a very special uh, case of conjugation um, that involves incorporating the fertility factor actually into the chromosome. So pause now here and watch the parts three and four of the conjugation animation and then come on back. All right, now that you've watched the last parts, the parts three and four, bacterial conjugation, you know you saw something um, a little different where you actually had the uh, F factor where it can get incorporated into the chromosome. Um, this diagram on the left we'll walk through just to make sure we have the, the basics down. On the diagram on the left we have the bacterial chromosome again in purple here and then a plasmid with the F factor. But instead of just transferring the plasmid itself, sometimes the plasmid can actually be integrated into the bacterial chromosome uh, and then as a result you end up with the fertility factor being a part of the bacterial chromosome itself and not a separate extra chromosomal uh, fertility factor. When that's the case you get something known as an HFR, high frequency recombinant cell. An HFR cell is indeed F positive or F plus, but now when it's transferring the genes to a recipient cell, an F minus cell, uh, instead of just passing the, the plasmid itself, it can pass the entire chromosome as is shown uh, here in the middle here, to pass this entire chromosome if you have a long enough period of time. With E. coli, that takes about 100 minutes to move the whole chromosome across. You can imagine that this process does not always occur uh, in its entirety, so as a result, sometimes not all of the cells get, uh, not all of the genes get moved over from the HFR to the F minus. And also, since the uh, fertility factor genes are the last ones to be transferred over, very frequently the recipient cell does not even get those fertility factor genes, so it will remain an F minus cell. It may have new genes, as indicated by the sort of light purple here on the, its chromosome, but it will, in most cases, not be an HFR cell. Um, because it will not have gotten the fertility factor genes. They're the basics of um, conjugation, both uh, and uh, transformation earlier. The one piece we won't do this term, unfortunately, because of the timing, is the viral transfer of genes, the transduction. So at this point, uh, you're all set, good to go.